Good evening. I'm so happy to be with you, Claudia Buona Giuseppe. Thank you very much for your uh, beautiful introducing. I feel I'm child, so thank you. <laughs> so that's why I'm in charge of you. Okay? But not of you. You passed that age. So I'm so happy and uh, thankful to God and to His love and to His mercy toward all of us. And I really thank you for coming tonight to attend uh, this gathering. I need your prayers so we can all worship God and listen to His Word. And uh, by listening to His Word, we can fill our heart so we can live our life uh, with uh, spiritual satisfaction. If you don't mind, but more say that, can we stand up just to recite a small prayer to ask God the presence we are in His house so He can open our heart, our uh, mind, and to also make us ready. You remember the Lord, He talked about the parable of uh, uh, the soul. So there was four kinds of land. So we'll ask our Heavenly Father to make our heart, our mind ready like the fourth kind or fourth type of the land so we can receive his word as very precious seeds so we can grow and we can also grow spiritually Heavenly Father, we thank you from all our heart for this very blessed night we ask you, God, to bless us all, to protect us all, to be with us all. When the Lord, your disciples, they were gathered and they were full of fear. But you enter and you told them, my peace I give you. We need your peace in our heart so we can feel in your presence in our heart and we can have you in, in our life. I pray, Lord, that one day David the king he said you are the good shepherd to tend us all to take us all to the green pastors of your very beautiful bible and word so we can eat from your word and we can grow spiritually i ask you to bless us all with the prayer of ever virgin mary and saint mark and all the saints in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of God. Amen. 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 Please be seated. So, again, I'm very happy and very uh, pleased to be with you in this very special night. And I really thank you, because uh, without you, I won't be standing here. So, because of you, we are here, and our ministry can have meaning. So I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. Today I want to share with you a little bit uh, about an idea came to my mind when Sayyidina invited me and I was praying what to talk tonight because you know your love is responsibility. Your love is uh, uh, it's a gift so we have to deal with it with uh, very uh, strong responsibility otherwise we will not be able to hear his voice so this is what came to my mind and this is what God put in my heart from book of Ephesians when Saint Paul he said redeem the times because the days are evil why this specific verse from book of Ephesians Redeem the time because the days are evil. Because really, the time that we live in is very, very evil time. We all agree on that. There is no one, there is no home, no person I visit or I talk, they say, Allah is for Sayyidina. The time is so bad. So we all agree. So since the days are evil and the time uh, is a gift, how we can manage our time, our life. I will share with you what happened with me in my way to come from uh, 
Syria. Uh, I had a waiting in uh, uh, airport of Istanbul six and a half hours. So it's a long time. So I was thinking what I'm gonna do in these six and a half hours. How I'm gonna spend it. If I will eat, maximum I need an hour. Yes? If I will read, maybe I am tired because it was early, very early flight, I will sleep. If I will pray, a lot of noise and announcing in the airport. So what can I do to benefit from these six and a half hours? And I was thinking that the time will come, I have to go to my gate and to fly. So these six and a half hours, no matter how long, the time will come and it will finish. But what I'm going to do in these six and a half hours will make different that I benefit from this time or I will lose this time or I waste it without any benefit. This is what happened in our life. We are here waiting time, transit. You remember the people of God in the Old Testament. They were in Egypt. Then God asked them to flee and they went to go to the Promised Land. Between Egypt and Promised Land, there was a period of time of 40 years. And by the way, these 40 years, it refers to our earthly life. Our earthly life after the baptism. So, what had happened with these, those people? Unfortunately, unfortunately, this is what the Bible says, none one of those who were born in Egypt, and they were hundreds of thousands of people, I'm not talking about uh, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, none one of them was able to enter the promised land. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, none one of them was able to enter the promised land. Four years. It was a time to determine where you're going to go. Are you going to be buried in this wilderness in Sinai? Or are you going to be prepared in order to enter the promised land that God promised you as inheritance to you and to your children? I think our earthly life is the same thing. We are in the wilderness. Wilderness means there is no food. It's a desert. The same thing. Around us, bad things. We are scared for our kids. Any parents can challenge me and tell me now, I don't care, my kids will be the best kids even without uh, working hard to raise them up in the church or on the faith. There is no way. We work very hard as parents. We bring them to the church. We give them the best life, the best education. We pray with them. We do everything and then we lose our kids. So around us, it's a wilderness. Wilderness of Word of God. There is only, only the churches and the houses of the believers you can see spiritual food. Otherwise, around us is wilderness. And by the way, you all agree with me, it's getting worse and worse every day and every time. So now, how old are you? Just ask yourself. How old are you? I am 30, 40, 60, 70, I don't know. Almost 50. Almost 50. I'm going to choose it, not me. I'm less than 40. Oh, okay. Thank you, Abuna. So, how old are you? Now, let me ask you. Don't you think when you look back to your life, you see that the days pass very fast. You look, oh, I'm 20, I'm 30, I'm 40, oh my gosh. In 10 years, I will retire. The time goes so fast. Even we don't feel it. But now, 
Have you ever asked yourself when you look back to your life, if I, I, I'm doing kind of uh, program, the first day in the program, they ask me, imagine if you are 85 years old, sitting in your uh, room with the fireplace, of course there is no fireplace in Syria, but let's imagine like this, okay? And you have your coffee, and I don't drink coffee either, but it's okay, let's imagine, okay? And you look back to your age, your remarkable things that you had done, and you are full of wisdom, and not only full of wisdom, and you are very expert person because you went through a lot of experience in your life. So, what dream did you want to chase if you go back by then? If I am 85 years old, sitting looking to my life, what the dream that I want to chase and I couldn't when I was younger? I think this question should be asked to every and each one of us. The time never goes back. Your time, my time never goes back. So, since the time does not go back, so what we really lose, we lost it. And what we, what the things that passed, it passed. We cannot gain it back. I will give you an example. If the time of the school, of course I can study any time, but when the time of the school after graduating from the high school go to the university, if I didn't go for any reason, and now I am 50 years old, I can go to school, but you think with the family, with the work, for social responsibilities, can I go back as a student? I went to school when I was almost 40 years old. Okay? and I have no physical family, nor my family, and I have more time than what you have. But you know what's the problem? I was sitting with 19 and 18 and 20 years old student. So when the teacher give us something to read, they read it in two minutes, it take me 15 minutes. They make fun of me. This has happened with me. And I didn't enjoy it. They talk about things, I think they are crazy. And if you ask them about me, they will say, this guy is crazy. <laughs> so, pretty much, the things that we lose, we cannot get it back. Maybe we can get it, but not the same. Imagine you made a mistake in your health. Anything. You went to sport, and you were a curious person, and you fell, you were making skin, or I don't know what, you broke your knee or something. You will suffer all your lives. If we ask one of the adults, they will tell you, oh, one time I was doing things, I hurt my back. It has been maybe 30 years. Until now, he suffers or she suffers from that incident. So the things that happen, the things that we lose, we cannot give it back. We have to think about that, remembering what St. Paul said, redeeming what? Redeeming what? The time. The time. I don't hear why you uh, whispering. But Redeeming? The time. Why? Can't get it. Because the days are? Exactly. So that's why the Bible is study. The Bible encourages us to see how significant the time is. And because of that, we have to focus a lot. We have to pay attention to every single second in our time. Instead, if we spend it or we waste it in any, you know, worthy uh, things or without benefit from this time, we have to think it twice because the time is very important. Now, I have a question for you. What is the time? I want answers. I'm asking and expecting you to answer. What is the time? If somebody asks you now, what is the time for you? I have had. What is the time? Can you identify the time? What? 
Time is now. What else? Stewardship. I like that. Gifts. What is the time for you? Choice. Choice. I like that also. What is the time? Huh? Everything? Organized. What is the time? Not to be sorry. To be? Not to be sorry. Not to be? Sorry. Sorry. I like this answer too. What is the time for you? Gift. And else, what is the time? Opportunity. Opportunities. Precious. Let's think together and we'll find, inshallah, at the end. What is the time? But before we will answer, I will try to explain a little bit what is important about the time. If we will know what is important, why the time is important, and what is the things that we should know about the time, I think it will be easier for us to identify the time. By the way, while I'm talking, the time is goes. Huh? So if somebody sleep, you're losing time. This is the first thing you do. Okay? Number one very important things about the time that the time goes without stopping. The time is wheel, you know how the clock, and always this wheel turn around and never stop. In other words, the time is maybe the only thing that you cannot stop it. You never ever can stop the time. So you see how the time is important? You can stop eating, now eat later on. You can stop studying, you can stop uh, uh, go to work, you can stop a lot of things. Almost everything you can make it wait. But the time is the only thing you cannot, even if you take the battery from your clock, even if you pause your clock, never ever the time will stop. And because of that, we have to be very wise to invest our time for our salvation, to invest our time in building relationship with God, to invest our time by offering repentance daily, because the time never ever stops. In book of Ecclesi Ecclesiastical Solomon, says the sun also rises and the sun goes down and he stands to the place where it arose he want to tell us something the sun every day rises and every day sun goes down it never stop so we should be very very careful how to invest since it's a circle that never ever stop, I have to ask myself, how can I invest this time before I lose? I make something. When we look, I was in Egypt, we look to the pyramids, it has been built for almost now five, six years, a thousand years. Those people, they spend maybe, I don't know how many decades, how many hundreds maybe of years to build it. Until now, they don't know how they build it, by the way. But those people, they made remarkable something. Even they passed away, but what they had done, the investment that they invest in their time, we still have it. So even the time was going, never stopped, but they did something. So for them, like they stopped the time on or by that pyramids. Now, we all one day we are gonna stand in front of our Savior God. Do you think that time will be able to tell him the time that you gave me I invested so now I can be with you in the kingdom of heaven? Remember you cannot stop the time. 
Number two important things to know about the time. What was lost from your time, you cannot return it back. Correct. Correct. Thank you. In other words, now it's, I don't know what the time, it's 8 o'clock, 7.30, something like this. 6.30, that just passed an hour or an hour and a half ago, passed. I cannot return it back. The time that passed or we lost it, we cannot get it back and we cannot return. I have a friend, he always has two clock. One, he put it on the actual time, let's say now it's 7 30, and he put one always 15 minutes after. Why? To remember that I now have 15 minutes. It's a fake 15 minutes, but I do have. If it passed, I lost it. So that's why every hour we lose it, we cannot gain it back, and it becomes past. Eight thirty from now is future for me. I can do something. And by the way, you all choose to do something tonight. So you don't lose this time. Rather, you doing something, you benefit yourself. So we have the time. We cannot own our past. And we don't know, we cannot pretend our future. But we can own and use by great wisdom our present time in order to not lose that time. Even we will lose it from our age, but we will do something, we will be benefit from that time. The seconds that passed, it become from the past. And that's why Job in the Old Testament, he said, for my days are a brief, brief like, my days, not my second, my days, it's like a brief. It's like a vapor. Come, you see it, they disappear. And we'll see in the Bible we read this. And not only that, it goes very fast. Sometimes, sometimes we said together what we say, today is February 24th. Oh my gosh. New Year, it was just yesterday. We almost, we passed two months. So instead we think like this. Let's ask ourselves, what did you do in the past two months? Why? Because if I think wisely, I won't lose my future. The time, dear brothers and sisters, is like the wind, the air, or the water. You cannot hold it. But if I know how to use it wisely, I will be able to hold it. Number three, so number one, the time goes without stopping. Number two, what was lost from our time, we cannot return it back. Number three, and very important, our time, it ends every second. When we born, even we count, I'm one year old, two years old, but actually these years is the time and the second that I lost it. It goes from my age, it goes from my life. And all of a sudden, the time that God gave me, if I look back, oh my gosh, I'm 47 years old. If I will live, I don't know, 80, 75, more than half of my age already passed. What did I do? Where am I going to spend my eternity? If I have a family, what am I going to do to my family? What did I do to them? Are they going to remember me or I will be done when I will, you know, departure from here? And because the time is so short and it's so limited, we have to think 
about it than a gift. Somebody said the time is a gift. As a gift from God, so will never ever goes without investing or benefit from this time. Number four, and also very important, the time lead you to the old age. I remember one time I was celebrating, we had Bible study, group of Bible study when I was in California. So we decided after two years of the Bible study to do something fun in the Bible study. So we said every month, the last Bible study in the month, we will celebrate all the birthday of people who born on this month. So we do something fun. One year, so we can celebrate all the people who attend this birthday. So one of the month, we were like five, six people, couples, they had a uh, birthday. So I was making joke, fun with someone. I say, what are you going to give to your... It was his wife's birthday. I say, what are you going to give to your uh, wife a uh, gift? So just, you know, how we make joke. You look at her. I'm sorry, in Arabic, say, Khalid al Qala. So he said, like, let her go away. I said, it's your birthday. Come on. She said, no, no. She said, she grew up here. Do you want me to give her a gift? So you see how the time when we celebrate our birthday, we are getting old. I think we do our birthday to forget that we're getting older. Don't we? But we don't think about it. Why? Gift. <laughs> maybe vacation, maybe food, maybe I don't know. So the day, the time always leads you to get older. But what is the will of God for everyone? Since the times lead you always to be older. Every day we get older than the day before. The will of God is redeem the time. Because the days are evil. Redeem your time. Even you get older, but when you look, you are so satisfied, so happy. I am 50 years old, but you know how much I did? For example, if you go to one of the writers who wrote books, you tell him you are 70 years, you are old man, he will smile, he will tell you, but I wrote 50 books. I didn't lose, I'm 70, but those 70 was full of good fruits. So he won't feel bad. Why? Because invested is time. And every day we get older. This is what Solomon says in the book of Ecclesiastical. He said, I have no pleasure in the days. I have no pleasure in the time. Why? Because I lose it. When I become old person, I have no pleasure in the days. We know a lot of old people, God bless them all, and especially those people who really work very hard and they raise up good family. We say we are living by their prayers and their love. If you go deep to their heart, they will tell you, I had enough. I wish I can go today. I just don't want to suffer in my life. So the time leads you always to be older in your age and will make you disabled to do the things. I remember my mom told me about my grandfather, who was very, if we want to explain him, he was very hyper person. So he was never rest and never allow people around him to be rest. You know what I'm talking about. If he has nothing, he will take these pews out and more bring them back. He had like five, six hernia. He cannot, he cannot, you know, stop without working. He used to walk maybe every day, I don't know, 20, 30 kilometers from the village to the city and goes back. He works hard. But later on when he got old, 
He used to tell my mom, and this is what my mom told me. She said, when he wake up, he look to the roof, to the ceiling, he say, you know, today I'm going to walk to the village, which is 25 kilometers away. He said, but when I try to go to the bathroom, which is like two meters away from me, it take me half an hour. He said to, my, said to himself, he said, Qadrah. Yani, in other words, don't be crazy. If you cannot make two meters to go to the bathroom, you want to go to the village walking, which is he used to do it when he was young. We should be wise for what God gave us. Health, money, gifts, talents, family, we live in a very blessed country. We have access to everything we can do. The time always leads you to the old age. One more thing about the time. This is the fifth thing. The future is the result of the present and the past. Your future is the result of your past and your present time. Imagine you were addicted or you used to drink a lot we're talking about bad things okay and you hurt your lungs your body your mind and god opened your heart and you become a good follower to god but you look to yourself you are in the future you said, how much I hurt myself. We hear from, you know, different places, people, they have lung transfer because they were addicted or something bad. People, they eat without, they don't care. They eat fat a lot. They don't have healthy life. Then they have to do open heart surgery. And their life, all of it, it changes from one direction to another direction. Why? Because your future is a result of your past and your present. And the Bible says in the book of Galatians, For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Whatever you put, you will receive. If you are a wise person about your time, you are aware of what God gave you, and you do everything in its season, when the future comes, you won't regret when you look back to your life. Whatever man sows, that he will also reap. Number six about the time. By the way, these things, if we consider it very well, I think in five, ten years from now, we all going to look to our past, we'll say, wow, these five years past, but I did something. I didn't lose it. I catch the time. When we buy deodorant or perfume, what is it? It's air. Yes? With some fragments, but it's air. They press it, they put it in this bottle. Don't they? So you can hold the air if you are smart. And you can use it later on. But if you press the bottom up without any using, good using, what's going to happen to the air? Of course, vanish. But if you use the Doran, you won't lose the time. You won't lose that air. So you can hold the time when you look to your past and you smile. Number six about the time, and this is very important, that the times is too short. And this is, we see it in book of Corinthians, First Corinthians 7. But this I say, St. Paul, he said, but this I say to you, brethren, the time is short. St. Paul, he was traveling from one city to another city, 
he put his life to death he did every good things and he helped people he was he said I work more than all the disciples together but he saying as a warning he said dear brothers be careful the time is too short so that from now on even those who have wives should be as a thought they had none. We should be very careful. The time is too short. Number seven about also the time, the time or the days are evil. This is what St. Paul is saying in Ephesians. And because our enemy is so aggressive around us, waiting like a lion, to catch any opportunity from our life to destroy it let's be very wise not allow him to corrupt our time so we lose it and goes without any meaning everything around us if you open to watch the news for half an hour what's going to happen to you after that the press <laughs> oh i have to say food i have to go by i don't know maybe something will happen because there is no good news. The only good news is the gospel. <coughs> he is, this is the only good news. Anything else, believe me, no good news. You open social media, what you hear. Besides looking to the food and, you know, the women, they like to spend time on food channels. Everything is not good. You go to schools these days, especially here in this country. What do you see the education? They washing the brains of our kids. So everything around us, drugs, sex, homosexual and changing the truth and it twisted to be as a law and unfortunately we are slowly slowly accepting these mistakes these bad things and we adopt it why because it become reality So that's why we should be very careful. The days are evil and our enemy, the evil one, is so aggressive and will catch any opportunity from our time and from our life to lose it and to destroy it. Number eight and the last thing about time and it's very, very important. One day, every one of us will give an account of his or her time you will give an account of every single second you spend it on this earth you will be standing he will show you your life as you know like life every second you will give account about this every second so that's why the time is a gift it's a gift from God and somebody was steward or stewardship and this is what the Lord said in book of Luke he said give an account of your stewardship we should give and we will give account on our stewardship. Now, looking back to all these eight points and other things, if we want to identify the time now, what is the time for you? What? Priceless. 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 Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. I want to tell you a story friend of mine told me this story uh, he said I have a friend 
she had a cancer and the doctor told her she was late stage after chemo and we don't know what and I'm sorry maybe we know people they have cancer or any bad disease God forbid so this is not to remind them because we are a children of hope we are the children and sons of daughter of the resurrection but this is what happened with us he was telling me that he is a friend she the friend of him was a girl so the doctor told her you have between one month to two months maximum so he went to spend a week with her to comfort her to pray with her and they were very close a friend and he said i want just to get enough of her so he said we used to talk we used to remember our past we used to read eat if she needs something i take her out at the end of the day he said like 12 one o'clock i get tired so he told her he goes like is it a long time to sleep she told him you sleep i don't want to sleep he said but you're tired like me and you have even more she goes like i have enough time later to sleep but let me enjoy my memories and my life and she told him something and he told me she told him i can tell you how many heart beats left i have it's so harmful it's so better when you say this we sleep until 10 o'clock if we do but i'm just saying for the sake of the conversation we don't care about the time we sleep we eat we lose time we don't do a lot to invest in our time so the time is priceless what else what is the time responsibility big responsibility the time why because we'll give an account for every single second of our life what is the time if you want to put the time equal what one word can summarize everything all your answers by the way are beautiful and good yes the time is God Again, sir. So the time is God's, belong to Him. Again, it's a gift, it's a responsibility. What? Value. Very valuable the time. We just say that. If we use it properly, the time is so valuable. One time, a student told me. He was studying to be a doctor. He said, I wish my day is 48 hours. <laughs> I told him, but you will kill yourself. If you work 30 hours, you will be done by age maybe 40. He said, but I want to benefit. It's a valuable. People, they die if I don't catch their life time is so valuable what is the time time equal church. Church? Church. Change. change yes beautiful answer time is change because if you come to God and you walk with him and you give him your life by coming by true repentance the time will be actually you will begin to live the eternity from here from this earth by the way i can say you can abuna can we can preach until the last second of our life but believe me if we don't take this thing serious believe me we are not 
only losing time, we are losing our eternity. So what we are talking about when we preach, when we go to church, it's not something to fill your time. You have a schedule, you go to work, you eat, you take shower, you do shopping, social life, and church. No, 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 this is not what it is. Church, relationship with God, being good with people around you, showing Jesus that you have you in, offer repentance daily, reading Bible, receiving communion, all this you are catching time. When you curse, you lose time because the curse that you get out of your mouth, you cannot get it back. You can say, yes, Lord, forgive me, but it hurt you. When you miss deal with your family, you are losing time. When you be wild in your relationship with others, you are losing time. When you hurt people, you are losing time. So what we talking, what I'm talking about, it's not only for preaching, may you love for me or we love you. No, no, I don't want you to love me. I want you to love yourself by looking to the time. Looking good glasses, these glasses all time, and looking to your life through these glasses. What did you do to yourself? What did you do to your family? What did you do for your eternity? What did you do to the people around you? One day you will be standing in front of God and you will show all the people that you dealt with them. Is the Lord going to tell you, good and faithful servant, you were faithful on those people whom I gave you, the time that I gave you, the, the gifts that I gave you, or you were unfaithful, get out. When I judge people, when I make fun of people, when I prefer to spend time out of the church, I know this time there is a certain liturgy. Oh, you don't know how busy I am. I promise you will never ever be not busy. Even after you retire, you will have things to do. But can you guarantee your time to be retired? How many people, young people we know around us, we lost them? Physically, I'm talking. They are not with us now. They are, we pray, in, they are in much better place. So time is so valuable. It's like in Arabic we say, the time is the sword. If you don't even know how to use it, it will cut you. What is the time? Repair. Yes. Life. 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 To repent. Life. Yes. Thank you. Time equal life. Your time is your life. Two people, they answer me. Your time is your life. When we talk about how old are you, we're talking about this age is your life. What did you do? How did you invest in this time? Very simply, if you misusing your time, you are messing up your life. I was just telling you about this girl. She was suffering from cancer. She said, I can count if I will live one month or a month and a half. I can count how many beats my heart will make. So your time equal what? My life. And David the king, he say in Psalm 39, you can read it when you go back, verse 4 and 5. He said, Lord, make me to know my end. Open my eyes to, to, realize, to realize my end. And what is the measure of my days? How long, how short my days are, that I may know how frail I am. 
how I'm gonna go home, gonna leave this earth. Indeed, you have made my days as hand breath, like very short. And my age is as a nothing before you, because the eternal one, as long as I live, it's gonna be nothing in front of the eternity, my very limited time that I spent on earth. Certainly every man at his best state is but a baby. The best one, the best person, the most healthy, the longest you live, your life is like a vibe. It goes vapor, sorry. It goes just like nothing, just like a breeze, like smoke. You see it and they disappear. And St. James, he recalled this by saying, whatever you do not know, what will happen tomorrow? For what is your life? He is questioning, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanish away. This is what is your life and my life. Why you are mad, why you are sad about what I'm saying? This is good. You remember Simon the Elder? He lived for how many years? 200, 300? When he said, saw the Lord, he said, finally, dismiss me in peace. Release me. That's it. I get tired. I cannot see any more good. I cannot eat. I cannot enjoy the time. I cannot run. I barely can use the bathroom. I'm useless. Thank you. So if our life is like vapor and it disappears, this is good things. But how to invest this in a short time? This is what will make different in your eternity. And now, since the time is your life, and since the time is very important, how we can benefit, how we can use, how we can invest our time in good way and right way. I will say a couple of advices, and each one knows how to benefit. Number one, set up your priorities. Based on your eternity and your spiritual life, not on your money, not on your degrees, which is we need it all. We work very hard to get these things. But always set up your priority considering your salvation as the ultimate goal in your life. Because if you set up your priority and you make it in good order, such as my relationship with God, my relationship with my family, my ministry, stewardship, my comfort as a person, how I can have a good quality life, my work and my social relationship, if I can put it in good order, I will be happy because I love, I live a good life with God. And I will enjoy my family and my family will, will enjoy my presence. Sometimes bad people when they die what they say, we say in Arabic, in other words, he finished and we are now time, our time to relax. This is what people will say around you when you depart, or people they will say, oh, I wish this person lived more time with us. So set up your priority, you will live good life and you will make people around you also living good life. Another thing, and it's so funny, but, but it's true, we have to wake up from our sleep. St. Paul, and this is very beautiful, in book of Romans chapter 13, 
aim of the chapter. I encourage you all to read. I will read a little bit from that chapter. He says, and do this, St. Paul he said, and do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Now, it's a high time. It's short time. Let's wake up from the sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. First, when we grow up and we decide to be with God as a Christian, the time now is getting closer. So that's why, please, let's wake up. If you live bad life, if you hurt yourself by any bad things you do, or you hurt people around you by not being a nice person, wake up. Wake up, because you are getting close to your salvation then when you first believe. And then redeem the time. Redeem it. Invest in your time. And try to control the things around you. If not, the things will control you. How many of us, if, for example, we have now a new kind of addiction, social media. If you don't go to your social media for a day, next day, what are you going to do the first thing when you wake up? You go to the old social media at the same time, just to see if something, you miss something or something passed. Redeem the time in good things, or otherwise you won't be able to have good life quality. And St. Paul, he, he said, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Why? Because he knows. He knows where is he spending the time with him. If you want my life, I'm with you. My time, my life will be good. If you want me to go, I'm ready. I also will be with you. And also remember, like the Solomon said, there is a time for everything under the sun. Don't try to do things not in its time or in its order. Be wise. Okay? Let your kids enjoy his childhood. And when you are a husband or you are a father, enjoy your family. And when you are old, also try to share from your wisdom with others. Use everything in its time. You won't lose also time. I will tell you finally these things. Imagine if you have someone can give you every day. Imagine there is X person. We don't know this X person. Let's say the job. Poor say the job, I will use him as an example. <laughs> Imagine if say the John can put in every one's account every day. $68,400. Well, never ever have, but let's say this. <laughs> every day he can put in every one of you $86,400. But with one condition, you gotta spend it wisely. You have to spend it very wisely before 12 midnight. And the things that you left over in your account, you cannot use it the other day. What are you going to do with this $86,400? You won't take it? You will not take it. You will give it for donation. Give it back to me. Give it back to me. <laughs> what else? Seriously, I'm talking serious. Poor people. Yes. Yes. Spend it in prayer to see where the Lord wants us to put it. 
Spend it. Spend time in prayer to see where the Lord is. Spend time with the prayers so when God will tell you what to do with this eighty-six thousand and four hundred dollar. I'll give it to you so you could use it for the warm Christmas. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Not me. I'm just in charge of the letter. Anyway, let me tell you something. You might be very surprised how much Sayyidina John can give you every day for all your life. But this number, 86,400, is actually is the number of the second that you have every day. Every day you have 86,400 seconds. What you're going to do with it? Let's please stand and pray small prayer. Bak masida. Shema ko wabu ruhayu kadishu hala wabu shariru ameen. Our Savior and our merciful God, we ask you in this very precious time, priceless time, very valuable time we ask Lord to open our eyes and you give us a wisdom to know that we are not here this night by coincidence but you brought us here to rethink about our eternity considering the time that you give us on this earth. Lord, the question that I ask myself and my brothers and sisters here tonight and the people who hear or listen to us, what did you do in your time? If you look back, are you going to be proud of your past? Or are you going to be full of shame of your past? Are you going to say, thank you, Lord, for every second because you gave me wisdom so I had a good time in my past and helped me to also have good time in the future? Or I'm going to say, I'm sorry, Lord, I lost my time. Or in other words, I lost my as long as you can hear this prayer, you still have an opportunity. The Lord said, I am the gate, I am the door. And He said, if you knock, you shall receive. If you knock, you shall, the door shall be opened to you before the time will be shut, before the time will be closed before your time will be equal zero because your life will be done on this earth are you going to begin a new journey with God tell him Lord forgive me for misusing the time tell him Lord you put your life in order to give me life or I thank you because you give me all your time so I can gain time instead of the time that I lost. Please Lord wake me up because the times and the days are evil. I ask the Lord to protect us all and to wake us all up by the prayer of ever Virgin Mary and in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Please be seated.